There are so many legendary skins from Dead by Daylight. Most of these skins are Resident Evil characters, though we do have some from Silent Hill, and there are Crypt TV skins as well. Recently, we got William Birkin as a legendary skin in the game. And since this is becoming more and more of a possibility, this makes me wonder what is the best legendary license for every original killer. Hey everyone, it's Schmuckles. Don't mind my hair, I just woke up. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. I'm also live on Twitch right now, streaming Dead by Daylight. Link for that in the description below. We brainstormed a lot of these ideas on my Twitch live stream, so a big thanks and a big shout out to my Twitch community. I've been asked so many times, Schmuckles, do you think that this niche license would fit in Dead by Daylight? And my answer is the same every time. It usually comes down to three factors, right? Are both parties down to license the content into the game? Does the property fit into Dead by Daylight? And would bringing that property into the game actually make the game money? One possibility to really fill in the Museum of Horror with iconic niche licenses is to bring them in as legendary skins on original killers. But really the purpose of this video is not to discuss if it's possible or likely. This video is just going to go over the best possible iconic legendary license for every original killer in Dead by Daylight. That being said, I'm not going to put a really iconic hyped property on any of these lists that clearly deserve their own chapter. And if we've learned anything from William Birkin on the Blight and Look-See on the Doctor, the powers don't have to be a perfect fit. They should be around the same physique as the character or skins that we see on the character. They are going to inherit the power of the original killer too, but it doesn't have to be a perfect fit. So when talking about the Trapper, which license would be the best legendary license to come in on the trapper. I know people are probably thinking Jason Voorhees out of the gate. I don't have Jason on this list because Jason should be his own chapter. Kind of a silly license that could actually work for the trapper is Hello Neighbor. The neighbor that you're trying to get away from during that game places traps all over the map. The runner-up license that we have for the trapper is Norman Nordstrom. He's the main antagonist of the 2016 horror film Don't Breathe. This is a newer, more modern horror property. I'd say that the best license skin for trapper would be Victor Crowley from Hatchet. I mean, he's a buffed up, really horrifying villain. Even some of the outfits that we see him wear look pretty similar to Trapper. So right now I got Victor Crowley as the best possible legendary license for Trapper. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. For the Wraith, I know a lot of people out of the gate would be thinking Predator and um, no. I'm so, shutting uh, your butt down. And that's, that's entirely- <laughs> I think Predator would be its own standalone chapter, so I picked another license instead. The license that we're going with for the number one spot is the Invisible Man. There's different versions of the Invisible Man, right? Like there's the 2020 horror film with the Invisible Man. There's also like the Universal Studios classic Invisible Man. Man. I'd say that bringing in licensed legendary skins is a perfect way to bring in some of the iconic horror universal licenses that might not necessarily be hyped enough to be their own chapters. For Hillbilly, that's a really tough one because Leatherface would be kind of the best fit for Hillbilly in my opinion. The runner-up that we have for Hillbilly right now is Chainsaw Man. This anime license is more of like the comedy horror genre or like dark fantasy, but we already have seen some legendary anime skins come into the game on various characters. The best fit for Hillbilly Billy, I think is the Chainsaw Man from Resident Evil known as Dr. Salvador. We've already seen a lot of legendary skins come from the Resident Evil franchise. The Chainsaw Man wears a potato sack as a mask over his head. He can be detected by the sound of a chainsaw revving nearby. And from the Resident Evil lore, due to his size, mask, and unique weapon, he's very easy to tell apart from the regular villagers. I really do think that Dr. Salvador could inherit Hillbilly's chainsaw ability. For the nurse, we talked about a few different licenses. The first one mentioned was Carrie. It's not really a perfect fit, but it does seem to be like a similar kind of character. They both have tragic backstories. It'd be kind of interesting to see a Carrie skin on the nurse. The Resident Evil witches also seem to kind of fit. It'd be interesting to see all of the Resident Evil witches come in as a legendary skin on the nurse because the power does loosely kind of fit. It's not a perfect fit, but these don't have to be perfect fits. Just keep in mind, whatever license we pick as the number one spot here is going to be the best killer in the game. So the skin that I've kind of settled on for the nurse is Valak or the nun from The Conjuring. She's overall the main antagonist of The Conjuring universe. We've seen her as the main antagonist in The Conjuring 2, The Nun, and Annabelle Creation. Valak is seen as a very powerful demon that manifests as a demonic nun. So I do think that this license would loosely fit on the nurse. From the hag, we already have the birch skin from Crypt TV, but there are other possibilities that could work. I think it's worth mentioning that the Mori that we see on hag seems similar to like a Hannibal Lecter kind of Mori. The witch from the Left 4 Dead franchise would work as a skin on the hag. The Swamp Monster from the Creature on the Black Lagoon could work. We already have a skin on the hag that looks like the Swamp Monster, so it does seem like this could work. I think that the best fit would be the Windigo from Until Dawn. The hag seems to be heavily inspired from a folklore Windigo. Her bio, Mori, recuperation, and her appearance all seem to scream Windigo. So for these reasons, I think a Windigo from Until Dawn would be the best legendary license for hag. There were a lot of possibilities brainstormed for Doctor. The Tall Man kind of crossed my mind. The Tall Man's supernatural abilities would kind of be the way to justify how the Tall Man inherited the Doctor's shock therapy. Frankenstein's monster crossed my mind. Frankenstein's monster was created by Victor by finding a bunch of body parts 
from recently dead corpses. The corpses were still fresh and they were sewn together. Then he uses large amounts of electricity to make all the parts start working again. That's kind of the general idea for Frankenstein's monster. So that's how you could kind of justify an electricity power for Frankenstein's monster. The projectionist from Bendy and the Ink Machine could work too. This projectionist is like a cyborg ink-like creature. But the best fit for a doctor legendary license would be Nightmare from Five Nights at Freddy's. Nightmare uses and admits static, causes hallucinations, and makes audible noises and can teleport. So pretty much all of Nightmare's abilities except for the teleporting match the doctor and his add-ons. You could even justify that the doctor's hallucinations are a version of this teleporting. The Huntress already has the legendary skin the Mordio from the Crypt TV franchise. We'll start with the runner-up which is Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman is very deranged and uses an axe to murder an American psycho. However, the top pick is definitely Jack Torrance. Jack Torrance from The Shining is known for chasing his family with an axe around the Overlook Hotel when they're all trapped inside the snow blizzard. It really does seem like a nice fit with the Huntress's axe power and Mori. For the clown, I know a lot of people are going to be thinking Pennywise out of the gate, but I personally think Pennywise would be a really good standalone chapter. So the best legendary license for the clown, in my opinion, is Art the Clown from Terrifier. This is an example of a new, really big license that might not have the legs to be its own standalone chapter. So I think Art the Clown would work really well as a skin on the clown. Spirit was a really difficult killer to find a license for. Spirit really is more of like a ghost that can appear out of thin air. So for Spirit, I've kind of settled on the Jackal from 13 Ghosts. The Jackal is the 11th ghost featured in the Black Zodiac. During the film, we see the Jackal running through the house, and he is invisible during parts of this hunt. So it really does kind of make sense with the power and aesthetic that we see with Spirit. For Legion, we already have Hunk from the Resident Evil franchise. Jeff the Killer kind of crossed my mind. Jeff is a creepypasta character. Norman Bates from Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho makes a lot of sense with Legion's frenzy ability. Like, it does seem like Legion's frenzy ability could be like a Norman Bates rampage. This license really is an iconic classic piece of horror, but the best fit for Legion, in my opinion, would be Vanny from Five Nights at Freddy's. Vanny is the main antagonist of Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Vanny wears a white bunny costume that has stitching all over it. Her bunny mask has a wide, creepy smile with small buck teeth, a large pair of long whiskers, small eyebrows, and big, glowing red eyes that appear to be spaced out. We already see a lot of skins on Legion that loosely match this description. For the plague, there were three possibilities that I could think of. The first possibility is, and let me know what you think about this, is a Candyman skin on Plague. Like, if they decided Candyman is too niche to be its own standalone chapter, which I don't really think it is, so it's not the first pick. But the idea with Candyman would be to replace the plague vomit with bees. So Candyman is literally spitting out a beehive at the survivors. And then you could replace all of the plague fountains with mirrors. The power would function exactly the same mechanically as the plague's power, and Candyman could kind of work as a skin on the plague. Reagan McNeil from The Exorcist could also work as a skin. The problem with that is Reagan is 12, so we can't really have that as the top pick because there can't be children in Dead by Daylight. The power could loosely make sense on Reagan McNeil. It's not a perfect fit, but it's close enough. The best fit for a legendary license on the plague would definitely be a spitter from Left 4 Dead. Spitters spew a corrosive ball of steaming acid that coats the ground in a puddle. So this is not too dissimilar from throwing up on vaults or pallets. This killer does really look similar to the plague and it does seem like this could just be a legendary license skin that they could bring in for the plague. Ghostface is kind of a weird case because he's half original, half licensed. When first thinking about it, it seems like for Ghostface, the best legendary skins would be skins for Stu and Billy. But I'm not sure how much that would actually transform the character other than like voice lines. So I don't really consider that to be like the best option. Right, like the mask is licensed on Ghostface, but I still picked a killer that I thought could kind of make sense with Ghostface's ability. And that killer is Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter is a serial killer notorious for consuming his victims, earning him the nickname Hannibal the Cannibal. So the reason I picked Hannibal Lecter for Ghostface is this idea of stalking his prey, stalking these people before he actually consumes them. It'd be kind of creepy to see a Hannibal Lecter stalking you in Dead by Daylight, knowing that he is in fact a cannibal. So Ghostface's power put on Hannibal Lecter would kind of be replicating what exactly it's like when Hannibal hunts his victims. For Oni, the best legendary skin that I have is Mr. X from Resident Evil. Oni is incredibly fast, incredibly strong, and incredibly big like Mr. X. Just a lot of Oni's aesthetic would work really well with Mr. X. For Deathslinger, I could think of two options. The first option is the Fisherman from I Know What You Did Last Summer. The Fisherman works with the Deathslinger's power because the gun could be seen as a spear gun used for fishing. The Fisherman is not a perfect fit on Deathslinger, but it's close enough. And the license that I've kind of settled on for Deathslinger is the Terminator. And this is going back to the use of a gun in Dead by Daylight 
that is so rare. So it seems like the Deathslinger's power could be used to let Arnold use a gun. For the Blight, we just saw William Birkin from Resident Evil come in, but I could think of three other options that could work on Blight too. The first option is the Wolfman or like a classic universal werewolf. Like if we're never gonna get an original folklore werewolf chapter, might as well make it a skin on a character. So I think this would be a cool way to bring this universal license into the game. The second option is Mr. Hyde from Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There also is a Mr. Hyde-like skin on the Blight. The origins of this skin is from London and actually like the top hat in the entire skin kind of does look like Mr. Hyde. In fact, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is a novel that's actually set in London. We already know that the Blight is based on this character, but they could really bring in a cool licensed Mr. Hyde skin on Blight. And the top pick for Blight would be Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's. In the original Five Nights at Freddy's, we see Foxy running down that hallway. So the Blight's ability to rush across the map like that with his weapon held high in the sky really does seem like a Foxy animation. It really does seem like the power would loosely fit Foxy from Five Nights at Freddy's. There are a lot of possible skins I could think of on the twins. Off the top of your head, you could probably imagine Annabelle or Megan working as a skin for Victor. If we're never going to have Chucky as a standalone chapter, we could have a Chucky skin on the twins where Victor is replaced with Chucky and Charlotte is replaced with Charles Lee Ray. This idea of being able to switch back and forth between Charles and Chucky makes a lot of sense too. Charles was Chucky's original human form and the idea of Charles going around the map and killing people as a skin on Charlotte makes a lot of sense too because Charles is a vicious killer. I could picture him going around the map and having Chucky in a backpack. I think the cleanest fit for the twins would be to leave Charlotte as she is and have a jockey as a skin for Victor. Jockey is a special infected that appears in Left 4 Dead 2. He has the ability to jump onto survivors and cling onto their head and upper back. Like the animations that we see in Left 4 Dead 2 from a jockey looks exactly like the animations we see for Victor. So in my opinion, this would really be like the closest thing to a perfect fit on Victor. So that being said, the idea I have right now is leaving Charlotte as she is and have a jockey as a skin on Victor. I suppose you could replace Charlotte with another Left 4 Dead special infected creature if you wanted to. For Trickster, I consider the Tall Man possibly as one of the better fits for a Legendary License. The Sentinels are spherical metal devices used by the Tall Man for various purposes. They're best known for their ability to jam into a human skull. Replacing Trickster's blades with these metal devices could kind of be a way to justify how Tall Man could work as a Legendary skin for Trickster. I think that the cleanest fit though would be Negan from The Walking Dead. Negan uses a baseball bat as his primary weapon when he's a villain in The Walking Dead, so I really do think that that weapon with some throwing knives would fit Negan pretty well. For the artist, there were a few possibilities that came to mind. I was wondering if there's some way that Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds could fit. Like, I'm not exactly sure what you do with the artist, but The Birds is a classic piece of horror I thought was worth mentioning. Another possibility is Dracula, and this was kind of a runner-up possibility if you replace the birds with bats. I could kind of see the artist's power working that way for Dracula. This would be kind of a cool way to bring in a classic Dracula license too. The top pick for the artist that I have right now is Candyman. Instead of sending birds towards survivors, it'd be a hive of bees. For the Dredge, there's a really good license that perfectly fits. I could see the niche license Carry On as a skin that could work on the Dredge. Carry On is this bloody shapeshifter kind of monster that has similar aesthetic to Dredge. The runner up that I have right now is The Thing. I mean, the Dredge is kind of this slimy monster like character, which I could kind of see as like The Thing. We just saw a skin with Maurice's head on the Dredge. And this really does remind me of The Thing, like when the dog was The Thing. Also, the Mori does seem to kind of match The Thing perfectly. Like the idea of consuming whichever survivor is being Moried and then they become a part of the killer makes a lot of sense with the thing's lore. The perfect fit for the dredge though would be the Babadook. The Babadook and the dredge are both based on boogeyman folklore. The Babadook is known to be something that's like in your closet or under your bed, so it really does make a lot of sense with the dredge's locker teleporting power. For the knight, the headless horseman from Sleepy Hollow could kind of work. I think a Scooby-Doo knight could work too, but the license that I'm focusing on now that could kind of work the best is Dracula. Even the knight's map could kind of work as Dracula's hometown. We can even see a little bit of the castle on the Shattered Square, which could be Dracula's castle. And then for the ability, instead of guards, it could be like bat henchmen or something like that. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below. Do you agree with my picks? Do you disagree with my picks? So out of the niche licenses that I didn't say, do you think there are any characters from that franchise that could work on original killers? Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Also reminder, I'm live on Twitch right now streaming Dead by Daylight. Link for that in the description below. That does it for this video. Goodbye.